Everyone ready? Full with nice food, mashallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters ما شاء الله we we family now right ما شاء الله feel we feel like a family it's very nice now we're going to be talking about the love of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely unique and it's something that we are seeking as Muslims. We are seeking the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the love of our Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his names is Al-Wudud, Al-Wudud, which means, it's, all, it's, actually, it's, it's often translated as meaning the most loving or the one that loves. But actually, I guess a more correct explanation is the one who is affectionate. Now, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of calling himself the one who loves, calls himself the one who is al-wudud? Al-wudud, one of the foundation words of al-wudud is comes from wid. Wid means affection, it's affectionate. It's a, something that we do. When you wanna show your love for somebody, you don't just feel this love. You have to put that love into action, right? Correct or not correct? Are we awake? Yeah. Correct, right, alhamdulillah. So when we say al-wudud, how do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us? We know that he loves us when we see something. We know that our family members love us when we see something. We see them do something. We, we hear them say something. Not just we feel it in our heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his name is Al-Wadud for a reason. Because he is the one not just shows us his love, he does his love for us. He is affectionate. But the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like our love. This love is pure. It's with no, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need you? Does Allah need me? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khaliq He is the creator. He needs nothing. We need him. He doesn't need our salah, by the way. You know, sometimes we think, oh yeah, Allah needs us. We don't. Allah doesn't need our salah. We need our salah. It keeps us stable. It keeps us connected. As soon as the salah goes out of the window, it's the foundation of everything, right? As soon as the salah starts falling, then we start feeling this disconnect between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who does Allah love? Here we're gonna go and look at the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, huh? Surah number two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah yuhibbu atawwabin. Number one, criteria number one, is the ones who do toba. Toba means repentance, right? And then, mashallah, you guys are shiukan scholars, mashallah. Mashallah. So the ones who do toba is one category of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. See, these are things that we can do to get the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Category number two, how do we get Allah's love? The ones who are al mutahirin the ones who purify themselves. There are different types. If anyone has done fiqh on alim a course, on alim course, you will know the fiqh of tahara, right? The fiqh of cleanliness. The tahara that we're talking about here in the Quran is the cleanliness of the heart and the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also the physical cleanliness. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs our wudu and our ghusl? No. Allah does not need nothing. We've already established that. He doesn't need nothing from us. The wudu is for us to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm ready to talk to you now. I'm ready to connect with you now. I'm physically ready. I'm heart ready. If wudu and hustle were about something to do with a physical cleanliness, we would not be able to do wudu and hustle with turab. 
We would not be able to do wudu ghusl with dust or sand or placing our hands on the brick. So it's about the spiritual readiness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who purify their hearts. You can make as many wudus as you, as you like, as many ghusls as you like, but if your heart is corrupt, you will never be pure. It starts from here. I keep saying it every lecture, every lecture. I cannot say this enough. Why? Because very often in our communities, the way we're taught about Islam, I've noticed this through my 31 years of being Muslim, the way we're taught Islam very often, it's a big list of halal haram, halal haram, mukru, mukru, mukru. Subhanallah, where's the spirit? Yes, we have halal and haram, of course. But if we don't have the heart to implement this halal and haram into our lives for Allah, then where does that leave us as human beings, right? Where does that leave us? So start with here and save the discussions and the, and the fiqh and the different madhabs and all the rest of it. Because on Yom Qiyamah, it's not going to matter, subhanAllah. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves al-muttaqeen. The ones who are righteous. Muttaqeen, the word taqwa, the ones who have God consciousness, the ones who are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are different ways of linking with Allah, of getting the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves the one who has sabr. What did we say about sabr? Can anyone remember? Just give me some points. What, what are the different types of sabr? I don't remember. I'm going to give you guys homework next time, huh? Shukr and sabr are together. Yeah, shukr and sabr are together. Very often in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents us with both. What else about sabr? Come on, brothers. Are you sleeping? Huh? We have sabr on what's permitted, sabr on what's not permitted. Yes, absolutely. Sabr on your Sabr should be all the time. And we do sabr on the things we see. We see people praying. This is the type of sabr. Sabr, it is an active sabr. If you read the book of Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, you will see him talk about sabr and shukr together. So there's the type of sabr, which is the active sabr, when you are having to work hard to do something. And then there's the sabr, which is part of al ghaib the unseen. What happens if you, you had... Uh, something, the, the, the brothers and sisters, there's a lot of fitna in our country, right? Uh, you're going to go back home, brothers, mashallah, you're going to go back home and your eyes are going to be like popping from your heads after here. Subhanallah, because it's summertime. So there's fitna everywhere. Mashallah, the brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and help them to keep their hearts, mashallah, clean. Look at these, look at these faces, mashallah, full of noor. It's hard for our brothers, sisters, yeah? Very hard for them. So this type of sabr, do we know when a brother or a sister has had a fight to lower their gaze, when they've seen a fitna? No, because it's unseen. It's a fight that happened inside. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us and accept our efforts. And my dear brothers and sisters, you know when you're making that effort, and this is part of being a sabreen, you're making the effort and you're making the effort again and you fall, and you make it again, and you fall, and you do toba, and you get up, and you make it again, and you fall, and you do toba, and you get up. It might be the same cycle again, and again, and again, and again. And what? Do you know something, my dear brothers and sisters? You're doing jihad and nafs. The reward only stops happening when you stop trying. Ah, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. So the first thing we will talk about is finding love through Kalam Allah. Kalam Allah is what? The Quran. Kalam means the words or the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Baqarah, again, lots of amazing surah. Read through it. Do, read the tafsir. Learn it, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something really beautiful in, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Here we're looking at verse 38. Go away, study for yourself as well, inshallah. We don't have time to do full tafsir today just a very short thing now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a promise as al-insan that from the time when he sends Adam 
down to the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will send, and this is a promise, he will send hudan, which means a guidance. Allah will send what? He will send guidance. And if we follow this, we will be fulfilled both emotionally and spiritually and physically. These three things are triangulated, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't think that you can separate the physical, the spiritual and the emotional. For they're all inherently linked. If you're spiritually sick, your body will feel sick. Yeah. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these ones who follow this guidance, they will know, they will feel no fear. So if you follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be fearful of anything. You will not be fearful of anything. No fear will be on them. And no grief. I know that there are people here who are feeling grief right now. I know there are people here whose hearts are broken. SubhanAllah. But if we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will put this light in our hearts and the grief will get less and less and less because he will be carrying us, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, we said, get out all of you. And when guidance comes from me, as it certainly will, they will be no fear for those who follow my guidance, nor will they grieve. But if we're going to live the Quran, because the Quran isn't there, we've had conversations before, the Quran isn't there to wrap it up in a beautiful velvet cloth and stick it on a shelf and leave it. The Quran should be a living thing for you. You live the Quran. Not just in Ramadan, but all our lives we live the Qur'an. You want some guidance? Go to the Qur'an. You want some answers? Go to the Qur'an. You want something? You want to connect with Allah? Go to the Qur'an. So to live the Qur'an and to live anything, we must do two things. Number one, we must understand what it is we've got in front of us. If we don't understand what we've got, how can we value it? And number two, we must appreciate the value that it gives us. It should not be treated as a text or a works. It should be treating as living from us. We are living the Quran. It's the most precious thing that you will ever possess, my dear brothers and sisters. And there are people that have the Quran, but they do not have the Quran. There will be people that got the Quran, they don't have the Quran. Huh. Why? Because some of us throw the Qur'an away. We get rid of it. And here I'm not talking about putting the in the bin or deleting your app. Here I'm talking about the way we throw it away is that we neglect it. We neglect to listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make things very difficult for ourselves. Islam is too simple. SubhanAllah. Islam is so simple. We make it so hard for ourselves that we give up and we neglect the Quran, the spirit of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us. But it's the key to your heart. And unless we embrace the Quran with our hearts, how will we ever find the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How are we ever going to access that if we can't ever access even his words? We bring up our children and we send them to the madrasa. And we, they, te they learn the Qur'an, mashallah, mashallah, amazing. And then you ask them, yeah, bint, yeah, walad, what does this mean? Nothing. They don't understand a word of it. How can you understand the spirit of something if you don't even understand what it's saying to you? No translation, no nothing, subhanAllah. We have to instill the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into our hearts and into our children's hearts and then we're going to see change in our communities. Wahi, revelation. When the revelation came and, and the, the Sahaba witnessed this revelation, this wahi, they would witness it with their hearts and their souls literally shaking. They would shake from the revelation. Imagine this. When we hear the Quran, when we've been to the masjid here in Al-Aqsa, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. When we've heard Allah's words, are our hearts shaking? Are we really taking in what we're hearing? Or just we're like, subhanAllah, it sounds really nice. But actually, is my heart shaking? Are tears coming from my eyes when I hear 
this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the word of your creator, my dear brothers and sisters. What happened to us and our hearts and our minds shaking from this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains about the Quran in itself. From a fiqhi perspective, this is called tafsir al-Quran bil-Quran. This is the tafsir, the explanation of the Quran from within the Quran itself. There are different types of tafsir. We have the tafsir of the Quran from the hadiths and many other different types. We don't have time to cover this today. So we're looking inside for the, in the Quran for what it is actually offering us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. Al-Kitab bil-Haq. Al-Kitab bil-Haq. The book of Al-Haq, the truth. Huh? When I first became Muslim, somebody came, so, well, before actually, when I was first introduced to Islam, this sister came to me and she said to me, this is the Quran. I asked, what is this book? This is the Quran. She said, it's the book of truth. What did I say to her? Prove it. Yeah, that was my reaction. If somebody who's not Muslim yet, because yeah, every non-Muslim is a not Muslim yet. If somebody who's not Muslim yet comes to you, my brothers and sisters, and says to you, prove that the Quran's the truth. Or, why are you Muslim? Can you answer them? Or is it just because my parents were Muslim? Or because I was brought up Muslim? Or I went to school Muslim? Can you answer that to these potential brothers and sisters? Because if you can't even answer to yourself why you are Muslim and why you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can you answer to other people? SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here describes, verily this Quran guides to that which is the most just and correct and gives good news to those who believe and those who do righteous deeds and they will have a great reward. Okay, let's chop this up a bit and, and look at it in a little bit more detail, inshallah. So first of all, verily this Qur'an leads to the, the path that is the most right or the most straight. In, in Arabic, this is aqwamu. Aqwamu, it, could, it can mean upright, it can mean straight, it has many different meanings. The ulama, it's very difficult to explain this in English. Aqwamu, when somebody is, imagine if somebody is standing upright, but they're very strong standing upright. You can never move this. It's a strength. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Qur'an, aqwamu. And then he says, and let's think about this. وَيُبَشِّرُ mu'minina, And gives good news to al mu'minin to the believers. Now, this good news, brothers and sisters, is not for every single believer. And who is this good news for? الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ Salihati. Oh man. Salihati is what? Good deeds. MashaAllah. So it's not just Al Mu'minina everybody. It is Al Mu'minina Al Ladina Yamaluna Salihati. It's the ones who do righteous deeds. So you can't just believe and bas. That's it. Forget it. I believe. It's enough. Because some of us they, they, we think like this. Just like when you have hub, love in your heart, without wid, without applying that love, how will your loved ones know that you love them? Oh, you who believe, you need to do righteous deeds. You need to put that belief, put your words into action. Huh? Not just, I'm this, I'm that. No, just do it. Keep quiet. Crack on as we say in Yorkshire. So, we've got two things so far. We've got good news for who? For who, who is the good news for? Come on guys, for the believers, right? And who do what? Righteous deeds. Okay, I want you to take this in this way and we'll make it a little bit interactive, inshallah. yamaluna salihati. And what do they get? Ajran kabira. Subhanallah. Ajran Kabira. Kabira is a big ajr, a big reward, a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's really simple, brothers and sisters. Believe, do the right thing, and you're going to get Jannah, inshallah. It's simple. 
Don't make it messy. Subhanallah. How do people lose the Quran? Don't leave it on our shelves. Don't have your phone app and just get it out wherever. The way to lose the Quran is to neglect it, to leave it alone. Do not even attempt to live it, to not use its words, to use its messages incorrectly. How many times have we come across the haram of police? Huh? Their main aim is in life is to try and make everybody else feel terrible about themselves by going and judging everybody else and using the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make people feel negative. Subhanallah. If we want to follow the way of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was never doing the haram police thing, ever. Always Islam should be taught in the most beautiful way. Why? Because Islam is not about this, it's about the heart, my dear brothers and sisters. It's about changing hearts. People don't become Muslim through the changing of the mind or the forcing. There have to be two ingredients to this. Huh? And the ingredients, sister, you know what the ingredients are. Come on, what are the, what are the ingredients when someone becomes Muslim? Do you remember? So I've, I've picked on you now, huh? What, number one is the knowledge. 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 And number two, knowledge. Iman. Number one, knowledge, a little bit, even if it's a little bit. And number two, Iman. Everybody is potentially a Muslim, but you have to have those two things. They're coming together, inshallah. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us it's kitaba bil haqq of the truth. And the miracles of the Qur'an are a door to engage with this truth. We live in a time of science, my dear brothers and sisters, huh? So when we're thinking the way we've been brought up, and I think pretty much everybody here is from the UK, right? We've all been through the UK school system. We've been taught about science. We've been taught about all these things. We have it all in the Qur'an. Huh? We have it all within the Qur'an. And linguistics, language, we have it all in the Quran, the miracle of language. Over the 23 years of revelation, it's cohesive, it's consistent. No human writer, including Sheikh Speer. Yes, I did say Sheikh Speer. You can laugh now if you like. And Q, there we go, mashallah. In including Shakespeare, who is the greatest known writer in, in Britain. There are many other poets and writers across the, the world. None of them have even come close to achieving like the Kalam Allah achieves, like the Quran achieves. Humans change over time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consistent and this is why the message of the Quran is always consistent. So when people ask you, what is this Quran? How is it Al-Kitab bil haq How is it the truth? The linguistics, the language, just without anything else. Huh? On its own, this is enough for us to tell people about Islam. The challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges us in the, in the Quran. And he says, produce a chapter like it or produce a verse like it. There have been those who have tried. Just put your hand up for me if you've ever heard these attempts. Okay, do some research online. You will find there are some recordings that people have attempted to recreate the Quran. It is really, really pathetic, I'll be honest with you. SubhanAllah. May Allah guide them to Islam, inshallah. Because it's impossible to do this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this completely unique, this Quran. They were brilliant linguists, highly developed skills, by the way. These are not idiots. These are people who've spent their whole life dedicated to learning about the Quran. What? To try and destroy it. Huh? They know more than we do. Uh, if you look at these scholars, some of them from the West, that they learned the Quran, they were Hafiz, but they didn't have Iman, they weren't Muslim. Uh, they did it with the intention to destroy the Quran. There are people who will learn the Quran and they know better than you the Quran. SubhanAllah. We need to gain ilm, we need to gain the knowledge, we need to be able to answer in an intelligent way. Not screaming and shouting on a corner somewhere and care for this and care for that, no. This is not the way that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spread Islam. It's spread with hikmah, wisdom and knowledge, inshallah. We are a receiver of the guidance 
And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns us, whoever learns, teaches, or recites the Quran for worldly gain will be thrown into the nar. So we must be careful why we, how we're using the Quran. If you're using the Quran to try and get your own way with something, if you're using Allah's words to try and manipulate something, if you're using the Quran to try and spiritually abuse somebody because you want something from them, you are abusing the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's scary, right? SubhanAllah, may Allah guide us always. The, the third and final thing I'm going to talk about is taqwa. Because if you remember earlier, who is one of the criteria of the ones who Allah loves? Al-Muttaqeen, right? The ones who have taqwa. So of course we have to talk about taqwa. Do you find sometimes that you can't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter how much you want to? Like many people will come to me and say, I, I just... I, I, I really love Allah, but I'm really finding it hard to connect. I'm finding it hard to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do I do? Is this a symptom of my low iman? Like, what's wrong with me? And sometimes we feel guilty because we're not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I a bad Muslim because I'm not shedding tears with fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think all of us, maybe we go through these thought processes. We don't like to admit it. But it's part of being a human being that we think this sometimes. But there are different types of fear. There is healthy fear and there is unhealthy fear. Yeah? There is preparatory fear. There is a subsequent fear. So a fear after something has happened. And there is productive fear. To have uh, or to be of a muttaqeen, to have this type of taqwa, we have to have a productive type of fear. So what does that look like? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Have taqwa of Allah wherever you may be and follow up a bad deed with a good deed which will wipe it out and behave well towards the people. We see ingredients here. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave you ingredients. You know, we talked about the cake yesterday, huh? Now you're all hungry, huh? No, you're not. You just had dinner. <laughs> we have ingredients. Number one. When you did something wrong, follow it with something good because then you'll get an extra ajr and it will cover it. And then behave well. How many brothers and sisters do we see? And mashallah, 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 they are in the masjid and they're praying and maybe they're even teaching about Islam, but they're harsh. And they make other people hurt and they have no adab and they have no akhlaq and they're shouting and they're cursing and subhanallah they're just walking over the people in some way what is taqwa a taqillah be conscious of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it could be fear of punishment and this is really the the lowest level of having taqwa lowest level of iman but we go through steps don't feel bad if you're on that stage it's fine alhamdulillah it's a process so we're doing good stuff, we're praying because we're fearing the jahannam. We're fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a one type of iman. We might have fear that we haven't yet done enough to gain the love of Allah. So we keep on trying and trying. Maybe we fear that we haven't done quite enough to get that place in jannat or jannat al-firdus. What's your aim? Is it jannah, this, or is it jannat al-firdus? Tell me. The brother's like, oh, no. what's the right answer here, man? Jannah or genital firdus? Genital firdus. Ala? And the neighbor of who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our aim, my dear brothers and sisters. This is our aim. So fear should be productive. Not like when we run away from a tiger or a lion. or we, I know some sisters, mashallah, they run away from like a mosquito. I'm kidding. <laughs> Subhanallah. Some brothers run away from spiders. It's all good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So how do you feel when you sin? This is a really good measuring tool. Do you get this inner clutching? You know, you're, like your heart is being squeezed. Maybe you're late for a salah. Maybe you are feeling that you're sinning and you feel bad about it even while you're doing it. Maybe you're not quite strong enough not to. 
but you're still carrying on anyway. This is this is not a uh, fireworks, my dear brothers and sisters. This is very lightly gunfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the Muslimin in, in this country and in every kulli makan, inshallah, kulli bilad. So the inner clutching or turmoil that you feel when you are sinning, the discontentment we feel when we feel when we wait late for fajr or when we delay asr, this is a type of fear that actually we fear displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love him so much. And then you get to a higher level. You are fearing what? You're fearing not waking for tahajjud. I don't know, I'm not sinful if I don't pray to Hajjad. I'll tell you something amazing. My brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm gonna challenge you. Wake up early tomorrow morning, inshallah. I know, mashallah, you, most of you have already been doing this. Wake up early tomorrow, tomorrow morning, maybe an hour before Salat al-Fajr, before the, before the Adhan, and go to the Masjid. If you can't go to the Masjid, pray in your room, it's no problem, subhanAllah, but ahsan at the Masjid, better at the Masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven during the last third of every night and is there for you. We don't even turn down the, inv the invitations of our mothers and our fathers. Yet we sleep through the invitation of Rabbana, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's there, what not for himself, for you to answer your dua, to forgive you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. This is my challenge to you, inshallah, tomorrow morning. Even just two raka, four raka, and witr at the end. If you already prayed your witr, no problem. But do witr after, it should be the last uh, final one of the night, inshallah. So what do you fear? And think about where your heart is in this process. The fear of losing the opportunity to do good. We pass opportunities to do good every single day. Why should we want to do good? Because we want to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we want to gain his love. I'm going to talk about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have, we need to have what's called Himma al-Aliya. Himma al-Aliya, which means a spiritual resolve or a, a high Himma. A high spiritual desperation and resolve. And we absolutely want to please Allah. We want to get closer to Allah and we want to connect and we want the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having Himma. It's something we should work on. And we all have different levels of himma, by the way. Huh? And we are aiming to improve. Surround yourself with the people of high himma. The people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will help you to go along with them, inshallah. Take these as your sahaba. Take these as your closest companions. Look at your best friend. And here I'm not talking about just the colleagues at work and stuff like this is something else. Who is your Sahaba? Who is your closest friend? Will this person take you to Jannah? When you die, are you happy to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state of your best friend? Because you're a mirror of this best friend, my dear brothers and sisters. Think of who your closest friends are. Are you like them? And are you pleased to go back to your Lord? in this state. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surround us with the best of people, the people who he loves and the people he'll get Jannah al firdus and we will be with them inshallah ta'ala. Your taqwa is your journey. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that only you can see and only you can feel. It's hidden inside. It's al ghaib Don't ever try to judge somebody else's taqwa. Huh? It's very easy to turn around to people and say, or you, or you have a problem with your aqeedah. And you, by the way, you said, say this to someone, you're calling them kafir. <sighs> Very dangerous thing, upon my brothers and sisters. Don't try and judge somebody else's taqwa. They might have a stronger taqwa than you. And they might be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you are. They might be the ones who go to Jannah al firdus inshallah. And then you, because you judged them, and you tried to take the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is, al, he is the judge, and he is an adl. He is the one who is just. We're not just, we're human. We're al-insan. So leave the judging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep your love and your taqwa positive always. Even when we've sinned a huge sin, don't ever think that it's too much. Because it's not. The fact that you feel that inside, this, this, this gripping of the heart, shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you hidayah. 
Allah is giving you a guidance. So to finish off, because I can see like the, the you guys are going into this like post food coma now. How do you know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you? So we're going to talk about a really beautiful hadith. And this is in the collection of uh, an Nawawi's Arba'un, the 40 hadiths. And I'm sure many of you, mashallah, your alims, you have uh, studied these 40 hadiths. If you haven't, then study them, inshallah. And so this is from Abu Huraira, radiallahu who said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever is an enemy to my loyal friend, on him I declare war. I, I expect you to be finishing this for me. My servant does not draw near to me with anything more loved by me than what I have imposed on him. So we're starting off here with the farad actions, the five times a day salah, the farad actions. Huh? But it's not just the five times a day salah that is forward. It's enjoining kindness on one another. It's enjoining kindness and beautiful behavior on our neighbors. It's making sure that we are following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of ways. Let's continue. And my servant, who is Allah's servant? All of you. SubhanAllah. This applies to all of us. My servant continues. The word continue suggests that we keep striving and striving and striving. Why? Because we're never going to reach per perfection. Don't ever think you reach perfection. None of us have. And none of us will, by the way. Anyone who comes to you and thinks that they have reached per perfection, you are faced with either a liar or manafiq. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us from any of these very negative characteristics. So my servant continues to draw near to me with additional actions until I love him at this and when I love him I become his hearing with which he hears his sight with which he sees his hand with which he strikes and his foot with which he walks and the result is if he asks something of me I would surely give it to him this is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sahih Hadith and if he seeks refuge with me then I will surely grant it to him. Who is the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The wali or awliya. Let's look to, to Surah Yunus and let's look to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Rahimallah. His awliya are the people who believe and fear him. Remember we were talking about productive fear. huh? So the fear isn't a runaway fear. It's a productive fear inshallah ta'ala. As their Lord describes them, so everyone who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is mindful of him is considered to be a wali. Wali is the singular of awliya. Awliya is the plural. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an and other ones of the early generations of the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with all of them, said the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who if you see them, they remind you of Allah. Now there are different levels of awliya. Huh? Some we will recognize, some we will not recognize. Then again, we cannot judge this. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimallah, says that the people are of three levels. They are of level one, the one who wrongs himself, the one who is moderate, second level, and the one, the top level is the foremost in amilus salihat, in good deeds. The one who wrongs himself is the one who sins by failing to do what is the farad, failing to keep to the halal, the one who is sinning and doing things that are prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the one who is moderate is the one who, we're sinful, we're all sinful subhanAllah. But the one who fulfills the obligatory deeds regardless of the sinning and refrains from the majority of the haram deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for the things that we're doing wrong. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not just forgive your sins, but erase your sins. Like they never existed at all. The one who is foremost in doing amil salihat the good deed, is the one who draws close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on this hadith, by doing whatever you can of the farad and the sunnah and the nuafil, the obligatory 
the practice of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the extra deeds on top of that. Can you remember the lecture we had the other day? We were talking about the niyyah, the ikhlas, and that every permissible action you can turn into what? An act of? Ibadah. Yeah, MashaAllah, you remembered, alhamdulillah. So the hadith above mentions these two top groups. Number one, the ones who were fulfilling the farad, and number two, the ones who were fulfilling the farad and extra. And they keep striving to do the extra. So there's an, an order of establishment going on here in this hadith. We establish the farad, we establish the nuafil, but we can do that running alongside one another. But you can never replace a farad thing with a nafil thing. Huh? You can't replace the farad with the, uh, the things that are not farad. This will never replace. We should do the extra deed to fulfill the mistakes we made in our faraid. Huh? So for example, we know on Yom al Qiyamah, if we've been praying some Sunnah prayers and our Farad prayers were not quite there, not quite good enough, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reject them, just remember that. Maybe we didn't have the khushu, maybe we weren't close enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then we prayed the Sunnah prayers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use these Sunnah prayers to strengthen our Farad because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want to send you to Jahannam. Don't ever think that he does because he doesn't. Why? Because inshallah, he loves you, subhanallah. So the nafil cannot replace the farad. So don't think that it can. The aim is to fly high from iman to the highest level of iman, which is, remember from the other day, ihsan. We are aiming to fly from iman to ihsan. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, until I love him, this is the turning point. This is the turning point. We're still working on, of course. We're still carrying on with the work that we're doing to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It only ends when the dunya ends. When Malik al -Mal comes and takes your soul, which surely he will, subhanAllah. He will take the soul, inshallah, in the best of ways, as the water from the jug. But the nafil is the higher level, Allah's love. We can bounce between these depending on the state of the heart. But, and, but then the second thing and third thing as the result of Allah's love that we can see and measure. Number one, the dua is answered. So when you see your dua is being answered, and remember we talked yesterday, uh, we had a, a reminder about the dua. The dua will be answered by the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to answer it. So open your heart to whatever answer Allah gives. It, don't run the video through your mind of what you think it should be. Accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. And the second thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect us. He will protect you inshallah. And the third, a really most beautiful way that we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us is based on a hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, this is one version and there's different versions of this particular hadith. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a slave, he calls out Jibreel and says, I love such and such, so love him or love her. And then Jibreel salam, loves this person. And after that, Jibreel will announce to the Ashab al Jannah, to the inhabitants of Jannah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves such and such. So love him. He orders them to love him. So when Allah loves you, all the Ashab al Jannah, Ashab al Jannah, all the Anbiya, alayhim wasalam, all the Prophets, all the, the, the Shaheeds, all the people of Jannah that are there, subhanAllah, they love you. They love you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But then there's something even more amazing. The way that we can measure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah loves us. Then Allah will make the people of the dunya love you as well. Did you ever see a person and you just love them? Just halas, just automatic, just this auto love for a person you don't know them. This is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person. 
We'll finish off with the dua, inshallah. Ya Rahman, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Accept our ibadah, Ya Shafi. There are those people amongst us right now who are sick, who are preparing to return to you. They're suffering with patience. Ya Rabbil Alameen, fix their broken hearts and mend their broken bodies. Ya Rahman, you are the one who responds. We are here and we know you are listening to us and we know because of your promise that you will respond to us. We are asking you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we are begging you, answer our dua. Ya Mujib, accept our journeys. We have come here to this blessed place for you. We are seeking you. We are seeking your face, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We are here for only you, Ya Rabb. Accept our ibadah, accept our amilus salihat, accept our good deeds. Make us a people who are blessed and guided and hold our backs and do not let us go even for a second, Ya Rabb, because without you, we will surely fall. Let us be the voices of the voiceless, of the oppressed, Ya Rabbil Alameen. You have for forbidden dhulam on yourself and on us. We beg you, guide and free the people of this blessed land. land. Change or remove their oppressors as you have changed and removed oppressors throughout history. Ya Wudud, make us from those who you love. You are the only one who can forgive us, oh, Ya Rahim. We are asking you in all your names, erase our sins, erase the sins of our, your people, wash them away. We are sinners, we are not perfect. You are perfect and you will surely change our condition. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha anta wa astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbi ala izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.